Welcome to another video. This is your instructor, Arimas Kanfu from superskyway.com. In this video, we are going to look at examples of test cases and what the documentation looks like. All right, so a test case is a single executable test. It's supposed to be very, very detailed. One little thing you can test for. That is actually in theory, that's what it's supposed to be. But in real life, uh, a test case, one test case can be testing a bunch of different things because it would just make the flow easier. That's something you'll get in the future. When, when you're doing it, you'll understand what I mean. But in theory, a test case is supposed to be one specific thing. Like click the button, that's it works. Type, let's say you're testing login, right? Typing into the field is one test case, being it, like making sure the field can actually accept the, the whatever you're typing into. Clicking the button, the login button, that's another test case, technically, right, in theory. But in real life, you put all of that together because you don't want to waste time, oh, uh, typing, then clicking. You just say type and click. That's a login. That's a test case, right? So in reality, that's how it is. But if you look at the textbook definition of uh, a, a text case, it has to be very, very specific, okay? And every you can come up with tons and tons of test cases for a single page. One page can have hundreds of test cases. If, it, if you actually sit on a, a page, on any page in front of you, I'm sure you can come up with, even now without any practice, you can come up with a lot of test cases um, to that for what that page. And like I said earlier, the best thing to do, practice with everything around you, not just software, everything around you, just to, to train your brain to think in a way of a QA, basically trying to break things and trying to how to organize your thought about how the product should work. Okay. And the test case have several information when you officially document it, formally document it. It has a step, it has a test data, and it has expected results. And we're going to look at examples. So for example, this is a test case for a login page, right? A bunch of test cases. And on the screen right now, you see three different test cases. This is just a table, like an Excel sheet, right? We're going to talk about tools later on, but this is the most basic way of organizing test cases. If you join like a startup or or, so, or you have your own website you're trying to write tests for, then most likely you're going to do this, right? You just, uh, you're just going to put a spreadsheet and write down test cases, but it's not very scalable. Eventually you're going to need a more professional tool. So let's look at this example. So test case number one, usually you would have an ID so you can identify which test case is what. They will have a title. The title for this example is valid user login. Then you would have a description that says it might have a step, so it might have just as much information as you need. So this one actually has a step. It says go to login page, input email address, input correct password, click login, verify welcome message is displayed. Then the expected result is the user should be logged in. And the actual result is, well, depend, right? So every time you probably make a copy of this file and put every time you run, you execute it, you put your results in here. So the second test case is login with the wrong password. And again, the same thing, you have the steps and the expected result. Another one is verify forget password link. So you go to the page, you click on the forgot password link and make sure there's a pop-up that shows up, right? So you get the idea. So these are just three test cases, but you can have a lot more, but, and this is how you organize. So what you saw is just a simple spreadsheet, but there are tools like uh, professionally, if you work for a company, unless it's a super startup, you're going to use tools. So few tools, I recommend for you to look at. I don't think you need it at this point because you're just getting started. But just to keep in mind is uh, TestRail, what I have used, TestLink, I have not professionally used, but I've explored myself because TestLink is actually free. You can just install it on your machine. You can even use Docker if you, well, you're new, so you don't know how all that works. But um, TestLink is a free one and TestRail is a licensed one. But those are professional options that exist. There are a bunch of other ones, but those are the ones I I'm familiar with okay all right so oh i went too fast uh, let's just look at a few more uh, examples uh, this is just an example so this is a test case for a laptop it's not even for uh, software right it's just the actual the actual machine like i said you can practice test cases on anything so if you have a laptop i'm not going to go into the, the steps but let's say you have a test case to make sure it turns on right to make sure the os actually loads to make sure the keyboard works to make sure it works when it's plugged in and it works with a battery when it's not plugged in. Uh, to make, and you have a test case for each of the USB ports, right? All of that is an option. So this is just a simple example of how you can even come up with a test case for a laptop. So at this point, it should be clear to you what a test case is and you should be 
uh, you should start to think about test cases for everything you're actually using. All right.